Hey Kangi. Hi, my name is Shani Ganyan Bing. Hi, my name is Wilson Flyerson. And I'm Carl Wither. I'm Zane Children Bro. And I'm Lai Ken Min. We are from School of Architecture, Building and Design. We are students of the Bachelor of Monthly Selling, Design 2. And we are now presenting our short video regarding about domestic water supply. Domestic water supply, also known as drinking water supply, plays a vital part of the human culture, which does not just consist of drinking water, but also includes individual and domestic sanitation. For instance, bathing and cleaning. Decent individual and domestic sanitation are prime keys to ideal public health. Although domestic water supply plays a vital role in public health, it can also pose an inordinate danger where transmittable illnesses can spread easily. In order to ensure the domestic water catered to the community is safe enough to be consumed, the domestic water has to be treated before being supplied. There are two sources of domestic water supply, surface water and groundwater. Surface water is the accumulation of immediate runoff from rain or snow. Then, the accumulated surface water is divided into lake, river, streams and other reservoir supplies. Screening is the first and important station for both surface and waste water. This process is to remove huge and suspended debris from the structure downstream and to prevent obstruction in the plant. This will cause delay in the process. The screen opening size always affects the effectiveness of the screening process. For example, fine screening, medium screening and coarse screening. If the water treatment plant consists of a large surface, a range of screening devices can be used like trash screens, traveling water screens, drum screens, bar screens, or passive screens. The second step of water treatment is coagulation. It helps to settle fine material of suspended objects. Screen water still contains suspended impurities, so it is pumped into a huge sedimentation tank and allowed to sit for a while. Sedimentation occurs as the denser particles settle at the bottom and form sludge. Usually, the larger particles settle faster than smaller ones. The settling rate of these particles also depends on the water temperature and viscosity. Coagulant such as aluminium sulfate is usually added into the water. Flocculation speeds up the settling process. During flocculation, the coagulated particles collide, stick together, agglomerate and settle. To avoid them from settling, gentle missing is required. The pedal turns gradually to promote the growth of the particles. The amount and total volume of the particles occupied and the velocity gradient in the basin affects the speed of population. After flocculation, the water together with the agglomerated particles flow through a huge sedimentation basin. The liquid is split from the solid, the water flows very gently through the basin and the settled particle at the bottom is collected by spinning scrapple into a hopper. A sufficient detention period is essential for the sedimentation process to complete. Then, the clear water moves out of the basin to the filters. In this process, water is being filtered through a bit of sand and gravel. When the water flows, the remaining particles are trapped in the bed of the sand. At the end of the process, the water is collected at the bottom in under drains then flows into a reservoir. The filters must be washed regularly to maintain the rate of filtration and prevent solids from entering the filtered water. Disinfection is an important part and the final stage of the water treatment. The previous filtration process has reduced pathogen levels and this makes disinfection more consistent by getting rid of the turbidity and other intrusive components. The process of disinfection is essential to kill off the pathogens and to ensure the water is free of microorganisms before the water can be used for supply. Small concentration of fluoride is added to the drinking water at each of the plant as it can be beneficial to reduce the decay. 